Well, here's the beautiful old print that I purchased at the uh, thrift shop for $5.99. It is so hard to uh, get you to see this without, without glare. Mm, let me try to move it somewhere else where, where you can see it. Well, that might be a little bit better. I do uh, think it's in its original frame. The mat is really good. I couldn't find a title and I couldn't find a publisher or a date. Sometimes it's very tiny, tiny, tiny black print and it can be hidden down here at the bottom or even actually up into the print itself. There's no mat on top of it covering any of the print so uh, there's not really anything for me to discover unless I take the back off and find something, but there it is. It's in really good condition. There's a little bit of foxing right here, but not much at all. I think it looks like the little girl is uh, maybe saying her prayers. And judging by the costumes and the hairstyle and everything, this is pre-1920 without a doubt. It looks like maybe 1910 or 12, something like that, just after the turn of the century, in a really nice period frame. We already looked at the frame uh, yesterday in the, in the thrift shop. Uh, very good condition. Very quaint. I'm going to have to see if I can dig around and find the title of that. I like it. And although I opted not to buy that 1930s overstuffed living room chair, uh, I didn't show you this, but I did buy it in the same store and I paid 20 bucks. Actually, there was a discount that day, so I think this table was only maybe $18. Yeah, 18 It dates to the 1930s. The early 30s and oftentimes tables like this would be referred to as radio tables it's just the right size for your for your old Philco Cathedral it's in its original condition with wonderful book matched zebra matched veneer as we can see on the top it was very popular to do that then I'll let you see it just very typical 19 early 1930s and uh, that's my speed <laughs> so all it's gonna take is a little uh, little beeswax a little lemon oil a little scratch cover and it's ready to go uh, so with the discount I think it was about $18 wonderful well, yesterday was a good shopping day <laughs> and there's more don't go away well, the men are busy at the construction site outside of my window. I'm eight floors up. And they're going to wrap it up soon because the remnants of the tropical storm are about to invade the northeast. We're just going to be getting some rain later on today. But that's not what I want to talk about. What on earth does he want with that piece of blue glass? Well, you know, I've always loved blue mirrored glass and it actually hit the scene in the 1920s in a limited fashion but we saw a lot of it in the 1930s and the 40s and not just blue glass but there was peach green is very rare but you can find it and uh, sort of a rose color and it could be used on furniture it could be used on lamps uh, it was an accent, and it was very modern at the time. Clocks, oh, I've seen it used in many different uh, applications.
Now, of course, you know, uh, we've got a big hole in this one here. I went ahead and cleaned it. Uh, but as you remember, and many of you do remember hanging uh, these hanging on walls, many times in Christian, uh, in Catholic homes, there'd be an image, as I said yesterday, um, of the Virgin Mary and sometimes a likeness of Christ. And nothing is here anymore. It's gone. There's nice old felt on the back, which is uh, perfect for a table. Now, there were many dresser mirrors that were made for vanity tops to put your perfume on. And inserts on uh, little end tables and coffee tables and that kind of thing. So what do I want with this with that big hole in the middle of it? Well, it's absolutely perfect to use as an underplate for anything you want, such as a large, beautiful Art Deco vase. <laughs> with flowers in it. What do you think of that? Nobody would ever know there was a hole under there. Sorry you can't really see how beautiful that vase is. Let me put it over here. I paid five dollars for that vase. It's made in Japan and it dates to the uh, late 20s, early 30s. And um, oh, what are the blossoms that they have? Not apple blossom. Ooh, cherry? Is it cherry blossom? Anyway, I think that, that might be what that is. But let's get back to this. What else can you do with it? Well, here's a wonderful Art Deco uh, thermometer for home use in a black Bakelite case. And set that right on the top. And just look how that elevates it. I love how the black and the blue uh, sort of uh, contrast each other. Oh, it's not really showing up as, as much as I'd like it to. I guess because of the, uh, that's a little bit better right there, you can see. Hey, it's endless, right? What you can do. Let's just try a few more things. This just barely fits. Now, I just bought that a few days ago. It's a wonderful small Art Deco vase, probably a little bud vase. And I can even put that on there and it, it just covers the hole and sits in the center like that. Boy, how Art Deco is that? You know, for the center of your 1930s dinner table or coffee table. I could even, if I wanted to, so I don't scratch the top of the bookcase, put the old 1930s telephone on there. Can you tell I'm having a good time? Now most people would say, well what are you going to do with that, with that hole in there? Well, how about an Art Deco vase? There's that wonderful pottery vase that I think is, is Brush McCoy and dates to the late 20s, 1929, I think. Now I know uh, the light is coming in from the window and you can't really see the objects very well, but you've seen this, you've seen this beautiful vase before. We'll move that out of the way. And you know what I think I'm going to do? I think my favorite thing on this piece of blue glass has to be my Art Deco kitty. What do you think of that? Now, I know he looks like Frank Art. He's not. Um, several companies made Art Deco cats like this. Let's get this in a better... Let's move this so you can see a little bit better. What do I want to do here? I want to come over here and uh, put it right there. And then go and get the cat. You know I love black cats. And I think... That I'm going to be displaying that's really smart really art deco looking isn't it is it not I like it the black of the cat contrasting with the blue mirrored glass I like it a lot so jadeite so if you ever are out and you see this blue glass Hey, it sells well too. People are always looking for this, especially if they need replacement glass. There were even old radios. There's a Spartan radio that has blue glass on it and it sells for thousands. That was what, $1.49? Okay, Art Deco Kitty. All right, let's go do something else.
Well, I'm having a really good time showing you my flea market finds, and this is fresh from the New Jersey flea market yesterday morning. I paid $15 for this kitchen clock, and uh, a clock not made in Connecticut, but made in Illinois. This is by the West Clocks, W-S-T-C-L-O-X company. And it's running beautifully, it's very quiet. I did have to take, I took it apart, I took the bezel off and polished this and took uh, the glass out because an insect had gained entrance into this clock and he decided to um, move on to glory and uh, his remains were floating around in here and I found it objectionable, rather unattractive. So we took it apart, removed the dead insect, had a moment of silence, put it all back together again. The dial here is paper, and it hasn't faded. Now, of course, this is a kitchen clock. And, um, you know, I cleaned it, oiled it. It's an electric clock, obviously. There's the, someone replaced the cord at some point, a brown cord. But we can adjust the clock here, if we have to. I'm not worried about this little paint loss around there. The yellow is fantastic and uh, really makes me think that we're getting into the early 40s here. We're sort of leaving the 1930s cream and green era, but you can see the deco influence on the simplicity of the hands and the way the numbers are designed. Um, I paid $15 and I don't know. I am going to sell this clock. I don't have it listed yet, haven't done any photography. I'm going to let it run for a few days just to make sure it's keeping perfect time and then it would be just right for a 1940s, even early 50s kitchen. Yeah, what do you think? Uh, I love it. So I simply couldn't say no and I thought at $15, if I can clean it and make sure it's running okay, uh, there's a little profit in that. Alright, time flies. Let's go do something else. Wow. Wow. Sometimes you just don't have an adjective other than wow. All right, put your eyes back in your sockets. Can you believe it? Okay, what is it? 1955 Sunbeam Mixmaster. Now this particular model is the 11C. I believe C stands for chrome because the Model 11 also came in that old-fashioned white color that we had in the 1940s. Well, you know, as you know, when these came on the scene in 1930, they were uh, a cream color, and you would use them uh, with the uh, jadeite bowls, and then later on in the 30s you could get the custard color. Uh, bowls, which this may look white, but this is actually it's actually uranium glass that will glow beautifully And that's a nice custard and then this is the earlier jadeite that's in the 30s and 40s and then we hit the 50s and then the the model 11 C Now this was only made for one year or once well two years 1955 56 the 55 56 uh, season the model 11 and I think uh, this, it, this came also, I think, in pink and in turquoise. Um, those are hard to find. The chrome is not that easy to find. Most people just, you know, bought it in the standard white color. Um, you could get clear bowls. In fact, I think most of the time this comes with actually actual clear glass bowls. Now, I'll tell you that these bowls here will lift the mixer, and of course you know that uh, you just take your finger here and press on this spring-loaded catch right here, and you can actually pull the, this, the mixer off, and you have a hand beater, but it weighs about 30 pounds. Um, the mixing bowls here uh, fit perfectly, and, I, and these are replacements. I, I'm not sure... I'm really not sure who bought these or when these were purchased because if we look underneath it says stainless steel made in Korea. So, but I, I have a strange feeling that maybe Sunbeam actually 
continued making these bowls, you see the groove here in the bottom of the Bakelite? Well, this large bowl fits uh, perfectly into that groove, in, into that in, in de indented circle, and the small uh, aluminum bowl fits perfectly in there as well, keeps the bowl from uh, sliding off. So, um, uh, anyway, I know the bowls are not old, but they sure do look great and they fit like a charm. Now the base is Bakelite. Uh, at some point it's, this becomes a different plastic and this is all heavy chrome and it's in perfect working order. These are the original beaters, absolutely, with the little plastic piece here which is designed to uh, spin the bowl. You want to keep that plastic piece on there. This right here, this little cap. There was not a cap on this beater. And you're not missing one. And then this plastic would hit the bottom of the bowl and uh, cause it to spin on this little Lazy Susan thing here. So that's original. And this is the uh, this is the grill on the front, which is a little less deco than earlier. Now we're starting to uh, look a little more modern. And then, but the handle is the same. The wonderful streamlined shape. We can really say American streamline. This is great industrial design. And then back here, we flip this, uh, this uh, lever here so we can have the large or the small bowl. And then of course, you're familiar with the bullet shaped uh, controls on the back with all these different speeds. Mm -hmm. You can read on there, cookies and custard, white sauce, puddings, potatoes, salad dressing, mayonnaise, cream, butter, sugar, juicing, beating eggs, candy, and then all the attachments that you would put on there. Uh, and then so and it says mix master up here now uh, did it look like this when I got it uh, not exactly it was pretty good but there was a lot of oxidation on the chrome which I had to clean and polish I spent about three hours on this folks because nobody wants to buy a vintage kitchen appliance with somebody else's old sticky kitchen grease right this is as clean as a whistle now. I cleaned everything. I took it apart. I oiled it. Uh, it purrs like a kitten. It runs on all speeds. And this should last for another 60, 70 years. Who knows? And if you happen to have one of these and you want to know where the model number is, I'm not going to take this apart and show you now. And we probably won't be able to see. But up under here try to focus uh, your model is way up in the, where I'm pointing up there where the connecting rod uh, attaches to the base you'll see the you'll see the model number and as I said this is an 11 C 1955 56 uh, in chrome let's put the bowls back on the only other thing I have got to do is replace the line cord now I don't mind the cord but a lot of people are going to be scared and it really should be replaced. That is the, that's the original cord right there. And um, you see this, these old cords will uh, crack. And that's not good because that's the insulation on the outside or the inside. The inside is, when it cracks, it's usually the insulation on the outside on these cords. The inside insulation is a cloth and you're usually going to be okay. You won't short anything out. But that's got to be replaced. It really should be. And um, I'm waiting on getting an appropriate uh, kitchen appliance cord so I can go ahead and put a new cord on it. So whoever adopts this mixer will feel, will feel very safe using it. Wow. Okay, that's a charm. What's it going to sell for? Well, I'm not selling it for less than 100 bucks. I can tell you that. And uh, they're just not that easy to find. Uh, search around and you'll see. Try to find a Model 11C, Model 11 in Chrome. You don't see too many of them, especially in this condition. And this condition, you couldn't ask, uh, I don't think you could ask for a mixer in any better condition than this, uh, considering 
how, oops, what am I stepping on? You, you know there's always gonna be something on the floor around this place. Okay, that's it. I had a good time showing you my flea market finds. Uh, I'm gonna be back tomorrow night with another kitchen counter thrift haul and all of that stuff will be up for sale in the old curiosity shop. And I have taken your advice and I'm gonna list that Christmas tree anyway, even missing its plastic jewels. You know where you can find them, all of the big box craft shops or you can buy them online. So I'm gonna list that as it is anyway. Everyone, I hope you're having a nice night. Thank you for watching. I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop, and if I knew you were coming, I'd have baked a cake. So long for now.